from in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, marked the rainiest day in the city's history and a one in 1,000 year rain event. And see, it's one in 100, 100, then all of a sudden it's one in 1,000. Yeah, so when we say one in 1,000, it means in any one given year, you have less than a 1%. You actually got a tenth of a percent chance of something happening. I like the way that this guy is convincing us that we don't understand statistics and simple arithmetic percentages and he's gonna uh, redefine what fractions are and one in 1,000 year event is not a one in 1,000 year event and it's like we understand and if you have any sense at all you'll understand that they do all this work because it is so anomalous the weather is extremely anomalous and it's been like that for the past five ten years in fact it's the fifth thousand year rain event to strike the lower 48 in five weeks the weather will always be weather but climate change is playing a big role let's break it all down Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. Texans are cleaning up after a devastating flood accompanied torrential downpours that moved over the DFW Metroplex on Monday. We know that this was a thousand year rain event or one that should occur on average every thousand years. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how often it does occur though. We know that this was a thousand year rain event or instead it just means that X amount of precipitation has a 0.1% chance of happening at any given location in a given year. Instead it just means that it's not for the whole U.S. or whatever, it's for that one location. Now, how do we know what a thousand year rain event is if we don't have a thousand years worth of data? It goes back to basic high school statistics. We can collect as much data as we have, say 80, 100, 150 years, and plot it all on a graph. Then we fit a distribution to it. Think back to the bell curve back in high school. The more common events are toward the middle, all bunched up with the greatest frequency. But when we go out towards the tails, we see things that are much more extreme and much more rare. I'm hoping it's not going to be as serious as they're saying. Well, and I, we're, we're, we're fairly well protected here. You know, they were hopeful you know, the, in South Miami-Dade and Kendall and Homestead back when Andrew, they were very, very hopeful until they were all dead. This is a house. Mm-hmm. See that? Just got... She decided not to evacuate. So that was a good idea. So if you're supposed to get out, go ahead and get out. Because if too many of you perish, they'll send me down there. If you live in that area, you must evacuate. It's a rule. But not everybody's listening. Because freedom and stuff. Lots of people here in the United States have said they're not going anywhere. We will not cover your funerals, and we will not feel sorry for you. They're stocking up supplies, boarding up their homes, and hoping which is moronic. This moves 20 miles to the west and you and everyone you know are dead. All of you. Because you can't survive it. It's not possible unless you're very, very lucky. And your kids die too. 